In today's Apple Daily, people need to start listening to me. New M1 benchmarks appear for the MacBook Air and they destroy every other Apple laptop ever. We talk about how I told you this in August and also Apple's future roadmap for the Apple Silicon. Let's get into it. For the latest Apple news, rumors and leaks every weekday at 12 UTC, join us in the iCave. So yeah, back in August, August the 19th, I think it was, I put out a video uh, talking about Luke Miani's benchmarks that he had come out with uh, based on extrapolating from the A12X and the A12 through to what we would get with the A14X, really mainly talking about the iPad Pros. However, I think we, we talked about how this was going to be insane for Apple Silicon, and uh, yeah, it is, turns out. And Luke Miani was within like 100 points on multi-score, I think. So like that is insanely accurate. Um, but I can't believe that all of these Apple outlets, like uh, Apple Insider and people like that, and I, uh, like I Update, Apple Track, they're all going, "Oh, look how good it is! It's really, it's really fast. Look, it's really." I've been talking about these benchmarks since August, guys. You're going to have to start keeping up with me. If you guys have been watching since then, definitely throw a like on this video. Definitely share this and just tell people they need to start listening because. Like, we're getting stuff right. So let's just get into the exact benchmarks. So MacBook Air 10.1 shows an eight core CPU at 3.2 gigahertz, uh, achieving a single core score of 1687 and a multi-core of 7433. This is all a little bit above what we were expecting, but that's because the uh, benchmarks that we saw before were clocked at 3.1 gigahertz so it may be that is an a14 and this is the a uh, this is the m1 which has got a little bit more power draw to it because obviously you've got those bigger batteries in there just insane and it's very very much in line with what we were expecting i don't know why everyone's so surprised talos of tech we're withdrawing your uh, apple sheet badge because you weren't impressed with the Apple Silicon event? What is wrong with you, dude? Like, honestly, you're one of the guys that I've looked up to for so long for not being negative on Apple, but there was no reason that you should have been negative after that thing. As the head I shepherd, I am withdrawing your Apple Sheet badge. You're going to have to start reviewing Samsung stuff. Sorry, dude. The MacBook Air at $1,000 is about 500 points on multi-core off of the base Mac Pro. Now, that's the $6,000. Doesn't come with a screen, doesn't come with the accessories. Beast of a desktop thing, which admittedly nobody should probably buy the base model one anyway, because I think there's some iMacs that beat that as well. But that being said, it is... Apple's very top of the line, all out, balls to the wall, beast of a machine. So you just need to start paying attention, guys. Apple Silicon is the way forward. If you're even considering, oh, but maybe I should buy the Intel MacBook Pro 6, don't stop right there. Get your hand away from the Apple Store button and, uh, and, and just get Apple Silicon or wait. If you don't want that one yet, because we're going to be talking in a minute about the roadmap and where Apple Silicon is going going to go from here. But it is a good place that we're going. So yeah, uh, the Luke Miani scores that I was talking about, um, we made a video in August, August the 19th, and I said, Apple Silicon is gonna be insane, it's gonna beat the, I, uh, the Core i9 processors that uh, Apple has got, and it looks like we were right. Sorry guys, you all need to just close down your little Apple rumor uh, websites, um, and just, just send everyone to me. Just put a link to my YouTube on there. So yeah, as I say, if you have been watching from back then in August, which is probably, what, like 20 of you, <laughs> based on how small the channel was there, we got like 1,500 views on that video. Like, that was pretty good going. Uh, it was one of the biggest ones at the time. But if you've been watching since then, if you watched that video at the time, or you've watched it since, please share this video out so that we can actually grow this channel a bit and people can know that we're here. Because everyone keeps telling me in the, uh, in the comments that we should have more subscribers, so give us a hand with getting there. Thanks. And I never do this kind of begging, please share my video thing. Just, like, if you like the stuff, tell people about it. It's a cool thing to do. Future roadmap for Apple Silicon. Now, I did do a video a while ago with my timelines when I thought we would be getting the first Apple Silicon in October. I still kind of think that that was probably Apple's plan at the time, was to bring it in October, but then obviously COVID continued to be for a lot longer than we thought, and uh, obviously we've ended up with three separate events. I have a feeling we're never going to see an in-person on-stage Apple keynote again uh, in, in the way that we used to, because these new ones are so good.
They're so good. But it's a shame that they've built that Steve Jobs theatre that they're then not going to put people in. I guess they might use it for WWDC um, and things like that and like internal conferences, but it's a shame. Assuming we don't have another Apple uh, event in December, which who knows now, we seem to just have one a month and that's kind of how everything happens. Um, we need to put an AirTag on AirTags so we can find where the hell it's gone. Um, don't know what has happened to AirTags, but let's put that aside for now. And what do we think uh, Apple Silicon is going to do in future? So I think we are going to be looking at an event in March. We've been having a chat about this on Discord. This is kind of what everyone thinks. So I think we will see another event in March, probably introducing the M1X or whatever they decide to call that. Their powerful chip, which is going to go into the first iMacs and the larger MacBook Pros. Don't think we're probably going to see Mac Pro just yet. In terms of performance, I think we're going to see very much the same cores, but probably in a 12 core configuration in, into the M1X. That is my guess. So you'll get, still get the four power efficient cores, eight super powerful cores. Um, GPU will probably be not discrete necessarily. I think it will probably still be a part of the system on a chip, but it will be a more powerful system on a chip in terms of the graphics. So maybe we're going to 24 or 32 core graphics. Don't know, I, I don't know enough about the architectural stuff to be able to tell you what difference that would make and in terms of power dissipation and stuff, but maybe they will move it just slightly off the chip in order to help with the, uh, the heat issues. Not that there are heat issues right now, let's be honest. We're coming from Intel. That's when we will see those. I think we're looking at March probably. It makes sense because financial years start at April for most people, so if, uh, if people need to upgrade their computer systems um, for business, which is where a lot of these more professional systems are going to end up, then that makes a lot more sense. But yes, with Mac Pro, it makes me wonder how they're going to do this. Now, I've said in the past, I think it might be on like an expansion card. My hope is that when they were architecting the original Mac Pro um, a couple of years back, they already knew that Apple Silicon was on the way and they have a way that you can expand it using something like the Afterburner card that basically plugs in and has all of your Apple Silicon cores uh, on it. And I'm wondering if we're going to see something like M1X being put into there, but in like a four M1X processor array or six M1X processor array for the super high speed. So a four, uh, four M1X array would be 64 processors. 64 processor cores, you know what I mean? Uh, plus all of the graphics and everything else. So I, I have a feeling that might be the way that Apple goes with Mac Pro in the future. I don't know if it will be built into the current one as an upgradable, but I would love it if they could do that. Then going forward, I think uh, September next year or at WWDC, we'll see the next version of Mac OS whatever that might be. Don't know whether they'll go to Mac OS 12 or whether it'll be 11.1, .1, but it makes no real difference. It's just a, a naming convention. And then going on to um, September, October next year, when we get our refresh, um, I don't think they'll wait quite as long. I think it will probably come out at an October event like the iPads previously have done. And I think that's when we're going to see M2 arrive. Um, I think the March event next year might be where uh, Apple basically says, and here's our new iPad Pros, bringing the power of M1 to A14X or whatever it is. Maybe they actually put M series in it, or maybe they give it a new name for iPads. But yeah, I think that's, uh, I think March is when we'll see new iPads. Then October time is when we'll probably see the next generation of Macs with the M2 processors. I know a lot of people are hoping that we'll get more Thunderbolt ports on there, more expandability. Yeah, hopefully. Um, and hopefully that will also come with the M1X type chips that we're also hoping for in March. But right now, uh, I would love to see from you guys, who is really crying out for more than two Thunderbolt ports on a MacBook? Um, how are you using it that you need more than that? So I know one of them is going to be for power, one of them is going to be for some sort of I.O. If you're using it out and about in that way, number one, you're not going to need to plug into power when you're out and about because of the insane battery life. And number two, when you're at a desk, it would be a much better idea to have a great hub that you can plug in one cable in and you get your power and all of your IO that's already on your desk, your external monitors and stuff that all runs off that one hub. Um, daisy chaining with Thunderbolt has always been a thing and I think that's the idea is that you can run up to six displays I think on one Thunderbolt cable. So just let me know your use cases and if you tweet me um, on Twitter at iCave underscore David, I'd love to see pictures of how you're using more than two USB-C ports on your MacBooks. Cool. Notification squad, we've got some new members. Vapor, Robert Robinson, Lav Yash, and Pascal Munix. Um, I hope I've got your names right. 
I do my best with it every time. Thank you so much for joining. If you want to join the notification squad, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell and let me know in the comments that you've done that and you'll get a shout out in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.